Our office is located in Belgium, in, uh, in Brussels. Uh, and as you probably know, uh, Belgium is rather full. We've built everywhere. So our office stands for densification. Uh, and in particular, my associate, Leo van Broek, uh, who is the Baumeister uh, of Flanders, uh, pleads for that. Our office throughout the years has been uh, involved in many projects uh, in which the dialogue between new and, and, and old uh, was, was present. So reuse of, uh, of various buildings throughout uh, the country uh, and many mills. That is something that we discovered uh, late including uh, former industrial sites uh, that has been transformed into cultural sites and we were part of it, uh, of that, with, uh, with new buildings. So this dialogue between uh, all the new, uh, between heritage values and, and new functions uh, is very present in our, our work. We don't know anything but, uh, but that. But uh, we feel that um, something is happening nowadays. Uh, we have the feeling that uh, heritage, cultural heritage, is in transition uh, from conservation in the strict sense, uh, from this dialogue between old and new, to something, to something that is much more, uh, to a new approach to, to cultural heritage, which starts from, not from the cultural heritage itself, but from the needs, the social, cultural, and economic needs of the contemporary society and the ones of the future generations. So this uh, dimensions, uh, dimension of sustainability, it's something that uh, keeps us uh, very busy and we are aware of the fact that it is only with creativity and uh, innovation uh, that we can uh, go on with that uh, approach. That is the key uh, to it. Uh, the project that I'm going to talk about is um, called, in a symbolic way, uh, COP from Cooperation. It is located in Brussels and it has been nominated for the Ms. van der Rohe Award, for the European Award uh, Prize, Ms. van der Rohe Prize uh, 2018. Uh, it is located uh, in Anderlecht in Brussels. It's a very poor uh, district of Brussels, a, a poor neighborhood where nothing was, where nothing was going on um, along the canal, as you can see. So what was the need that, we were talk that I was mentioning, uh, in this case, the need was uh, a new community center, if you want, a landmark, something where people can meet, something that people can refer to um, in, their, in their neighborhood. And um, this project, and this is very important, was actually part of a much bigger project. And that was the, the wish, on a political level, to reuse the canal of Brussels, uh, a former industrial area, as you can imagine, uh, to give it a new meaning. And that search for meaning uh, involved many, many actors. As it, was, uh, it has been already said, there is absolutely nothing we can do uh, alone. And um, the, beauty of this, the, the beauty of this project is that uh, it involved actors from all over Europe, actually, uh, active uh, in Brussels, uh, in the canal area. And the site of COP, was one of them. Uh, it was chosen as a strategic place to do something. Uh, and, and actually to, to do what? Uh, to, to talk about sustainability, the cultural sustainability that, uh, that we need by preserving um, the industrial heritage uh, and recycling it in an in a, in a ecological way. So the team was uh, really, really big. Um, uh, we've been working from the beginning with uh, many different actors. It's a project with European funding that also played a role, but also with, uh, with the locals, with the community, with the people who live in Anderlecht and, and who love very much uh, their neighborhood. So participation was, uh, was part of the process. And actually we discovered that we architects are designers of processes. This was a very beautiful surprise. We learned a lot uh, during this project, which involved um, so, many, so many actors and actually a lot of cooperation. Um, it um, starts from realizing that um, we didn't um, have to choose, actually. Um, we didn't have to choose a moment in time uh, to go back to, to find it valuable. Actually, in our vision, um, 
every moment, every period of a building, every, every use it has, it's important. And this building, which used to be a mill uh, and is listed, um, in, in, the, in the 90s became a um, pneumatic center, so a second-hand place where you went to, to pick your tire if you, had a, if you had an old car. It was full of tires, but um, its original function was uh, as important. So, as you can see, the transportation on water and the movement of, uh, of the primary uh, material that was used uh, in the mill to, to um, produce uh, all kinds of products and later on biscuits and, and so on. So it had a very long, uh, beautiful story, this, uh, this building, and um, a very beautiful um, interior. So for us, uh, time is very important, and understanding how buildings work is even more important than, than the value of, of the walls, of the bricks, if you want, of everything we find inside. And we discovered that, that this building, the center, the space between uh, the two buildings was actually crucial. This is where goods were um, uh, taken from and brought, distributed uh, in, in the country. So we, we said, let's do something very simple. Um, and this was a decision that we've made during a, an international competition. Let's do something very simple and let's keep the two buildings as containers, uh, very simple. And then we put everything new uh, in the middle, circulation, technical spaces, and um, we had to combine um, um, two different programs, two different functions, very, very interesting. One is an incubator for uh, small, medium enterprises, uh, social economy, and the other one is the one of the interpretation center, which is something else than a museum. So um, um, we've been uh, working to, uh, on this scheme. We had to demolish very little. Uh, actually, we've only demolished the very shabby constructions between the two buildings with absolutely no value uh, in, in no way, uh, no quality of, uh, of construction. And um, uh, we, as I said, put everything in the middle. This was the, the image of the, of the competition. Uh, this was during the construction site. Um, and I can tell you that we've been changing the plans many, many times, but you cannot see it because the scheme was as simple. Put something uh, in the middle, put something on top uh, because there was a need for it. There was a need for a landmark, for um, a, a place for people to meet on top. Uh, being on top does something to people and it doesn't happen quite often in, uh, in poor neighborhoods. It's mainly in the, in the rich uh, centers that we have that. For us, architecture uh, starts actually with public space. We are not, uh, we looked very much on how to embed this in the, in the public space and respect the roots uh, in the neighborhood. The um, um, interpretation center, this museum means that many things happen uh, on the site and we have an atelier for uh, restoration of boats, for instance, referring again to the history of the, of the canal. But you can also see in this image how we've actually raised the roof in order to make space uh, for a multifunctional room. So we've been working together with the building um, uh, to accommodate uh, all these new functions. And very important was the collaboration with uh, people from the monuments and sites and, and the firefighters, uh, because the firefighters wanted us to be able to evacuate people and the people from, from the Commission of Monuments and Sites uh, wanted us to not touch too much uh, the building. So we had to find uh, a good compromise. And actually, these evacuation stairs are one of the, the most preferred uh, places in the building. Um, we've been very discreet, just left, left everything as it was, put new windows behind the, the old ones uh, from the outside, they cannot be seen. Uh, from the inside, as you can see, absolutely every stage uh, of the building is present. We've only cleaned it and, and fixed the walls so that nothing falls on, uh, on people. Uh, during the, the uh, construction, we discovered uh, silos, which we were not aware were there because they were covered with tires and other constructions. So we kept them. We changed the project. So the project did not have uh, a fixed plan. Um, uh, we've been working with time very much in this project. Uh, we are showing the car, no? because this is past the, 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 the past of the, of the building. Uh, and that is visible everywhere. Uh, the building is very, very much used and in ways that we didn't expect. Uh, we, because, for instance, in this case, the silos are underneath and we discovered them during the construction site, uh, we had to create this slope which became uh, an auditorium and, and uh, it is very much uh, used. 
absolutely every corner of the building has a story and storytelling is very, very much present uh, in this project. Um, when people visit the building, they hear all these stories and they create new ones. Uh, and that is the meaning of the interpretation center. The um, incubator is done in, a, uh, if you want, in a reversible way. So everything, all the partitions are very light. It is very easy to come back to the uh, initial state. And the spaces inside can be rented and they can be more clean or more chaotic. Uh, there, but there can also be exhibitions uh, organized. Uh, children come to learn about the history of the place, uh, which is uh, um, actually about the Industrial Revolution. It is about um, um, biodiversity, because we are talking about a canal, so it's a valley. Uh, but it's also the stories of the migrants that uh, arrived in Anderlecht along this industrial uh, area. So, um, actually, we are talking about um, the history of Europe uh, in this project. Even the, the team uh, that has been working on it was a European one. Uh, we had a Swedish sonographer. I'm Romanian. Um, the, the representative of the clients, of all the clients, there were many, is uh, Spanish. Uh, so uh, the, the funding was European. Um, so this project for us talks about Europe and, uh, and its uh, history. These are Romanian uh, people singing uh, <laughs> in, the, in the space. Uh, a cafeteria on top which serves food from different, uh, uh, different countries. So it's a multi multicultural uh, cafeteria. The building is so successful that uh, we have to stop people from, uh, from coming uh, too much on, on, uh, in, uh, to visit it. Um, the children learn there is a panoramic uh, view on the roof, which actually shows very clearly how the neighborhood is changing for the better. So there is much more life uh, around the building. And uh, at night, uh, parties, all these images are taken from Instagram and, and Facebook. They are made by people who use the building. Even TV shows uh, happen on top. So uh, the building actually uh, talks about the city very much and about Europe, uh, but is also visible from uh, all over the place. So the city is also talking about the building because we can see it from different places. Um, it is this uh, inside out uh, story. And um, um, yeah, I see that the slide is uh, slightly uh, changed. This is a letter written by the representative of the client who talks about the immaterial heritage being uh, as important as the material one. And um, if I talk about that and the added value of the combination of uh, cultural heritage, the material and the immaterial one, and the added value that it has um, on, on um, uh, even on an economic level, the, the capacity to become a, um, if you want, an engine for development, um, and I add to the Baukultur uh, concept signed, I mean, the declaration which was signed by ministers of culture of Europe that talks about the integration of the uh, existing buildings, uh, historical or not, and the public space and uh, s says that we should look at them and infrastructure and we should look at them as a whole. So in this declaration, uh, it's, uh, this integration is mentioned and, and uh, added the positive economic added values. Uh, and I talk about the role of the architect, the social mission of the architect that we seem to forget. Um, uh, I think we architects, as I said, we start to become uh, designers of processes and we should do much more. We should get involved uh, in policy making and we should get involved on the level where the decisions, the very important decisions for our cities uh, are taken. And that is the political level. Um, this project could have not been possible without political vision. And this is something that we need, and I think we architects can, uh, can help on that. So if I have to close, I would like to close with uh, a request for a declaration of Leeuwarden uh, that does not talk, uh, goes beyond the quality of built space uh, as declared uh, uh, at Davos, and talks about the quality of life, and uh, talks about integration of many things, uh, of the built, the new, the old, the public space, uh, the, the social, cultural, economic needs of, so, of contemporary society and uh, of the future generations, that talks about storytelling, about immaterial heritage, about time, 
and uh, about cooperation between different actors, uh, between architects and other disciplines, as we said, uh, between uh, local communities and um, um, present generations, future generations, and actually talks about all these things on a European level um, because we are all European, as we could have seen, actually, uh, we've seen during the presentations of my previous uh, colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Anna.